Hi, as I mentioned during the webinar, I will show you uh, a few things in Stellarium. I will show you actually how we can use Stellarium to explain the seasons and the motion of the, s the sun in the sky throughout the year. So I opened Stellarium and I've already changed a few settings. As you can see, I put horizon zero, so it's very flat here. I've uh, put the date and time window down here. As I mentioned in the first week, I really like to put it there. I find it convenient. I've also removed the atmosphere. So that option here, I remove the atmosphere so we can see the sun relative to the background stars. And you can see two lines, the ecliptic in orange and the celestial equator in blue. And to put those, you need to come here in the sky and viewing options window, the markings tab, and then you have the equator in the ecliptic. It doesn't really matter if you pick these lines with the 2000 coordinates or today, uh, there hasn't been much difference in 16 years to really make a difference that you will notice in the sky. So just pick whichever you want. So we mentioned the ecliptic during the webinar and last week a little bit. Uh, the ecliptic is really the path of um, the Earth around the sun, but from our perspective, it is the path of the sun in our sky. So if I increase date by day here, you can see how the sun will always be along the, uh, the orange line. By definition, the sun is always on this line. You can see the planets are very close to the ecliptic as well, and we'll see the moon uh, a bit later on as well, so it can be if it is exactly on the ecliptic, then you will get eclipses when it passes in front of it, but it, usually it is a bit below or above the ecliptic by a few degrees, up to five degrees, as I mentioned again during the webinar today. Um, now the second line we have is the celestial equator. If you imagine the equator on the Earth and you extend that line onto the sky, then you get the celestial equator. So it goes from due east, from our perspective it goes in the southern sky, and then due west. If you were exactly at the equator on Earth, then the celestial equator would cut the sky in two from east to west going through the zenith, the point directly overhead. I've also set the time so that it's noon, roughly, so that the sun is pretty much due south. And I want to show you, if we increase date by date, how the sun stays on the ecliptic. But now it's moving north. As you can see, it's getting closer to the equator and it's getting higher in the sky, but actually it's moving north as well. And uh, because we're getting closer to springtime. So if I increase the time again, the dates day by day, look, the moon just appeared here. It's above the ecliptic by a few degrees. Now again, oh, now we switched because it's daylight savings. So <laughs> Solarium takes that into account. I will simply put the time to 1 p.m. So I still have my sun due south, similar to what we had earlier. And now as we get closer to the spring equinox, Actually, this is pretty much when the equinox is. I'm going to zoom on the sun. There we go. So how do we define the equinox? How do we say that it's exactly going to be on the 20th of March? I believe it's for something universal time, which would mean midnight here, my time on the, the computer here. So I won't show you at midnight because I would have to remove the horizon so we can see below. But you can see right now on the 19th, this is what it would look like. And on the 20th, then it's above the celestial equator. So sometime in there it crossed the equator and the celestial equator and that's when we define the equinox. Um, so if you have students wondering how do they define that, the time exactly, well it's due to the position of the Sun actually when the Sun exactly crosses the celestial equator then it is the equinox. So now whoops this is not what I want to do actually I just want to zoom out a little bit. So let's come back here and let's keep changing the dates day by day. So you, see, you can see the planets move a little bit, they give Mercury across the Sun, uh, Venus as well. And now the Sun is getting higher and higher in the sky, it's actually moving further north. Right now I'm moving, I'm showing you the sky when we're looking south. Afterwards I will show you uh, when we look west at sunset, roughly. <coughs> so let's keep increasing the time and now we're getting closer to the summer solstice. There we go, roughly there. So this is when the Sun is at its further north, uh, further point north of the celestial equator. So it's very high in the sky. Notice her earlier it was down here and now it's way up there. As you might notice here, uh, this is Orion as well. So we can see Orion in the winter, but we don't see it in the summer because it's up in the daytime with the Sun. So actually we should be seeing this in the real sky and now we can see the stars at the same time because I removed the atmosphere. So this is summer solstice. Now let's increase the time again. 
come back you see the sun coming back down or for further south it will oh there we're reaching a few planets here the moon you see the the moon pass every month and it will cross the equator celestial equator again on the fall equinox around there so this is fall equinox and now the sun is south of the equator and when it reaches its furthermost point south that's the winter solstice now I'm coming back to standard time <laughs> it's further west a little bit because the the sun is not exactly due south um, at noon every day actually it's there but it moves a little bit depending on where you are on your time zone and because of different motions as well so the sun is not exactly due south at noon but again anyway close enough for this so now it's the end of November and finally December solstice winter solstice there we go this is the when the sun is at its lowest point in the sky actually uh, very far south and it's um, yeah it's very low for us in the northern hemisphere and then coming back to where we are today roughly starting to go up again the days are getting longer as we get closer to the spring equinox so there we go this is this week now let's look what happens in the west at sunset for example because this is similar to the activity um, I recommended part of the observation project for this workshop uh, so what I will do is change the date uh, not the date sorry but the time to bring it closer to sunset so um, the sun sets at about 5 p.m. these days this is already a bit later than what it was at the winter solstice um, and as you can see the sun sets southwest <coughs> Now this is a bit harder to show with sunset because the time changes from day to day as well. But if I just show you, let's say in one month, and then sunset would be around 6:30 or so. Yeah, a bit later. So that's this is just a bit before the the equinox. So you can see the sun is very close to due west, but not quite. So if I increase the dates and then just a few more minutes. This is one of the only two days of the year where the sun sets due west during the equinox. And then again, if I increase the dates, now we're May 20th. Um, yep, sorry, and then, whoa, <laughs> it's a bit tricky. So around 8 p.m. the sun would set. Now it's quite a bit further north. So it sets northwest. And if, in fact, if I go at the summer solstice, roughly, this is where the sun sets. So northwest. And then again, if I come back, but now I have to change the time, um, the end of August. And this is roughly fall equinox, so it, again it is due west and so on. So we can go, but now I have to change the time. So if I go directly to the winter solstice, roughly there, and the sun sets, whoops. <laughs> It is harder to show on the horizon, it's easier to show the south, but again it helps to show on the horizon because you really see this motion in the sky if you pay attention uh, where the sun sets night after night and weeks after weeks. So there we go, this is winter solstice and the sun sets southwest. So this is another demonstration you can do with Stellarium. I like showing that uh, to explain the motion of the, suns, uh, of the sun in the sky throughout the year. Um, so there you go, hopefully you can uh, try it and show it to your students as well.